Thanks for joining us on our primetime newscast on Ekinos Television live from Douala, Cameroon. In this edition of the newscast, Prime Minister Chief Dr. Joseph John Guti braves insecurity, leaves Boya amidst confrontation, heads to the Meme Divisional Chief Town Kumba, have tete a tete, and of course, with individuals in uh, Kumba equally, a handshake with some uh, 22 ex Amber fighters. He is back to uh, Boya now to continue his four day visit to the southwest region of the country. That was our lone headline. Still, boss. Prime Minister Joseph John Gote has now finished day three of his four day official visit to the southwest region of Cameroon. Day 3 took him to the Meme Divisional Chief Town of Kumba, where he visited the Kumba District Hospital and, of course, had to talk to the crowd who gathered at the Kumba Grandstand to listen to the head of government's message. He said he's bringing a bearer of a message of uh, reconciliation and the need to end the conflict in the northwest and southwest regions of Cameroon. Uh, from President uh, Paul Bia. Semanjikan Gabriel tells us more on what transpired in Kumba today. A handshake from the Prime Minister to some separatist fighters who have dropped their arms in Kumba was the key moment of Chief Dr. Joseph Dungute's visit to Kumba this Thursday. It's injected into the schedule. I see the secretary general, the deputy secretary general minister, telling up, please can we do this body? A total of 22 separatist fighters were this Thursday presented to the Prime Minister after they dropped their arms at the Kumba Grandstand, where the inhabitants of Kumba listened to the peace message from the Prime Minister. Before the ceremony at the Kumba Grandstand, Chief Dr. Joseph Jongute visited the Kumba District Hospital that was set ablaze on February 11 to give some words of encouragement to some courageous staff who have remained to continue their work. Watch with great anger what happened here on the eve of the devil tribal. When you people were attacked and you had your premises burnt, your property burnt, with the few people who lost nearly everything for your fortitude, for your strength of character to continue working under this circumstances. Some people will be afraid and they will abandon their jobs. Then you have been here providing a wonderful service to the needy people of uh, the division, not only the division, because the hospital treats cases from Jian, from Manipuba, and many other places. The Prime Minister and Head of Government, after talking with the staff, went through the district hospital that has been in ruins and says the struggle will soon be a thing of the past. There is a time for everything. Now we are trying to quell this thing. God willing, this thing will stop in the next few days or weeks. That when that time comes, they will take stock of people who lost all their belongings or their belongings. The PM was received at Barum Bikang under tight security, both air and land, after having indoor discussions with political, traditional and other persons in Kumba, Meme Division, Chief Dr. Joseph Jongute has returned to Boya. <coughs> His visit to Kumba today, day two of his official visit to the southwest region of uh, the country, took him to Limbe, the opaque city of the Fakot Division in that part of uh, the country. In Limbe, the Prime Minister met with traditional authorities as well as administrative officials of the Fakot Division. And most of uh, the issues raised were the, was uh, the need equally for the government of Cameroon to consider releasing those arrested within the the context of the anglophone crisis.
crisis and engage in a meaningful and broad-based dialogue. In this report, Derek Jato equally had an encounter with an elite of the Southwest region, Mbela Muki, who had an appraisal of the visits of the PM to their region. A town in the big town for enjoyment. Don't be so. For nearly three years now, K town, I fear don't grip me. Life will not be the same for K town like we did before. That lie? Because of the violence, many of us will be bereaved. We don't lose friend or relative or papa or chief. President Bia sent me to come condole with all those who they don't lose people for this violence way in the with Cape Town and the men in particular for a long time now. That was rather an excerpt of uh, Prime Minister Chief Dr. Joseph John Gote at the, the Kumba ceremonial ground. And we go to day two of his visit that took him to the opaque city of Limbe before his coming back to the southwest regional chief town of uh, Boya. In this report, Derek Jato had a tete a tete with an elite of the southwest region of the country, Senator Mbela Muki Charles. It is May 15, 2019, day two of Cameroon Prime Minister and Head of Government Peace Mission to the Southwest region. We are here at Mountain Hotel. It is uh, after 8 uh, p.m. and it has been a very busy day for the Cameroon Prime Minister. He started his day over here with urgencies and later moved to Limbe. He spent most of his time uh, in Limbe. He was welcome, and many have described uh, his welcome to Limbe as a triumphant one. He talked to the people of Limbe that it's high time for the Southwest region to come back and stand on its feet. With me here is Senator Mbela Moki Charles. Coming to the visit of the uh, uh, Prime Minister Head of Government to the Southwest region, I think I've seen the Prime Minister uh, qualities that are sterling and qualities that are absolutely needed at a term like this in this country. Many are talking about concrete action. The Prime Minister is on the field. What concretely uh, is he doing to, to change the status quo? Many are saying that a number of the conferences, a number of um, uh, strategic meetings, a number of commissions, something needs to be done. We should first of all accept and agree that the Prime Minister has introduced a new approach to um, facing conflicts in this country. Not the wider meetings that are intended to um, um, uh, uh, gather people, a good for nothing assemblies that have been taking place uh, around us over time. A lot of people have been excluded who could offer uh, relevant uh, 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 proposals and uh, uh, suggestions. Some, some even hold, Senator, I'm not cutting the shot, some even hold that people, some people are excluded because of division. Some even hold that uh, if the Southwest elite uh, were that one, uh, the, the, the way forward could have been even speedier. I have to say that, that if people are not... Jato, you know, I will bring you back. There are a set of people who believe that uh, if they can divide the Southwest elite, if they work against the unity of the Southwesterners and the Anglophones in general, um, they were going to step in and make huge profit. Let me tell you, there are certain authorities and individuals who are making huge profits from the ongoing crisis. And they would love to see the crisis continue and disturb any move that is intended to arrive at a lasting solution to this problem. That is what is basically enabling this crisis to continue. So until we find such elements out of the way, it is going to be very difficult for anyone 
to carve out, carve a way out of this problem. And I think um, within a crisis and in a particular problem, if you use particular actors to get into a lasting solution, and the solutions are not forthcoming, for those who have done public management, you do an evaluation, you do an assessment. Authorities uh, as, uh, have said occasionally that um, elites are not here and everything is taking place in the region, that uh, the, the elite of the region have abandoned the region, they have escaped and they, they cannot be controlling from afar and or they cannot be controlling from other regions. That um, if, if they had been on the ground, uh, they could have better handled it. Maybe you, you are saying that some actors uh, have been used time and again because others are, are absent. Are you people present? Jato, Jato, let me tell you, those who are propagators of such allegations are themselves scaring the elite. That was uh, Derek Jato there talking on day two of uh, the visit of the Prime Minister to the southwest region. As earlier indicated, he was in uh, the town of uh, Limbe, rather the city of Limbe, and traditional rulers, authorities of the city of Limbe, as well as those of FACO division, asked, among other things, for the release of those arrested within the context of the Anglophone crisis, and equally demanded the Prime Minister to pass the message across to the governments of Cameroon uh, that it is important to engage a meaningful and broad-based uh, dialogue. Here are details on what actually happened in Limbi. And of course, uh, we will be having the reports from uh, Limbi on the meeting with officials of uh, the city of Limbi, as well as uh, those of the FACO division. It should be noted that Limbi is the FACO divisional chief town. And of course, uh, the prime minister had to meet with authorities of uh, the division as well, traditional rulers, uh, and equally students of uh, the University of uh, Buya, who all asked uh, the government of Cameroon to demilitarize the north West and southwest regions release those arrested within the context of the anglophone crisis and equally engage on a meaningful and broad based dialogue in order to see an end to the crisis in the northwest and southwest regions of Cameroon. We shall be coming back to that in subsequent editions of uh, the news and people plying the stretch of road that is national road number six linking uh, Bankim and uh, Mayo Banyu in the Adamawa region of uh, Cameroon have asked the government of Cameroon to respect its promises and rehabilitate uh, these, uh, this road especially the bridge linking uh, the two towns in the Adamawa region of uh, the country. They say the bridge has been broken making circulation difficult. Simanji Kangebe tells us more. If the journey covering this 115 kilometer stretch of road that separates the town of Bankim to Banyu, headquarters of Mayo Banyu Division, isn't a problem, road users are worried about the nature of the bridge on River Taram. For a car to pass on this bridge is a serious problem because of the rotten wood. Because things where they put them for inside for them, it don't rot in. It don't rot in. No way. And motor fuel for inside water and people that go die. The Taram Bridge has become a dead trap for the road users who will have to rearrange the plans on the bridge before crossing. When a lorry is trapped on the bridge, it's very difficult for other vehicles to pass. It is vital to state that the Taram Bridge is along the National Road Number 6. The road users are now calling on the authorities to come to their rescue, particularly as the raining season is around the corner and to escape from unwanted accidents. 
and some 323 families recently gathered in the littoral regional chief town Douala uh, to commemorate the International Day of the Family. While in the course of activities marking the day, some families raise issues like violence and insecurity that has been hitting some localities across Cameroon are uh, some of the issues that are badly affecting families across Cameroon. Immaculate Fogo tells us more. The country Cameroon for the past four years has been plagued with security threats ranging from the Boko Haram activities in the northern part of the country, the Selika rebels in the east region and the ongoing Anglophone crisis in the northwest and southwest regions. The devastating consequences of their activities ranges from numerous loss of life, rape, violence, burning of houses and the looting of goods. With such a tense atmosphere, many families have been divided. It was for this reason why some families met in Douala to commemorate the International Day of the Family. The meeting was aimed at bringing together parents so as to identify some of the causes of insecurity and equally bring up lasting solutions and engage ourselves as parents to eradicate violence and promote peace in our different families. During this come together that took place at the Governor's Service in Bonanjo, more than 328 parents answered present to the invitation of the regional delegate of women's empowerment and family in the littoral region. I am very pleased with the great turnout. I hope such gatherings will repeat itself so ideas can be shared and families could be enlightened on issues affecting them and the world at large. While awaiting the next edition, participants have been called upon to put in practice what they learned during this edition. And apart from insecurity, one of the problems suffered by Cameroonians is that of poor road network. A case in point is Mabandai neighborhood in Bonaberry Douala Four subdivision. The people say the neighborhood stands the risk of inundation and flooding with the coming of the rains. They justify their claims with the bad state of the road that has so far given a rise to large pots of standing water. More in the following reports. We are at Mabanda, a neighborhood in Bonaberry, Dualafo subdivision. Here at Mabanda, a disturbing promiscuity reigns with standing waters occupying almost every street. Gutters completely blocked and consequently forming larger pools of water. Inhabitants are compelled to increase ground level in order to create passage across the standing water and vehicle owners as well are having a hard time. Inhabitants say children find it difficult to go to schools because of the bad state of the road, while others get drowned in the larger pools of water, especially when it rains. The poor state of the road, others say, has also badly affected the transport network, as very few vehicles, both commercial and private, now enter Mebanda. Inhabitants regret that municipal and local authorities have given a blind eye, despite the worsening nature of the road and its impact on their economic and social life. With the coming of the rains, they are afraid that a disturbing flood and inundation might befall if nothing is done. And back to the Adamawa region, individuals who road users plying the stretch of roads uh, linking Gaundere and Garwa are complaining that the posted of the road is making circulation a miserable uh, issue for them. They are equally calling on the government to try to rehabilitate that stretch of the road as promised. Simanji Kangebe tells us more. Commercial motorcycles and other vehicles overtaken by water. <laughs> 
This is a section of the national road number one in Gaoundéry, connecting to Garoua. The state of this road has been like this for several years, particularly around the custom office. When it rains, one spends at least two hours on the road. Because of the nature of the road, when lorries are loading their goods, others can't move along the same path, causing traffic congestion. Inhabitants of this locality say they have been long promised by the government that they will repair the road, but till date, no changes. The population has just a message to the government, which is that they should keep to their promises and repair the road. While hoping that changes will be done on the road that has been a nightmare to road users, then inhabitants will still have to continue with the sufferings. And that's it for the first part of news. Up next is Talking Point. Thanks for joining us on Talking Point. Today we are receiving a legal mind and a politician he is Barrister Ashu Emmanuel, uh, President of Reform Party, and equally a Barrister at Law. Barrister, you're welcome. Thank you. Thanks for joining us. You're welcome. Good evening, Televiewers. Barrister, we start with the key issue, which is uh, the visit of uh, the Prime Minister Head of Government to the Southwest region of Cameroon. You, apart from being a legal mind and a politician, you are an elite of the southwest region of the country. Why are you not uh, in the southwest when the PM is coming to your region? Well, because we were, I, like many other elites, were skillfully kept aside. Nobody deemed it necessary to invite us uh, to anything. So I don't see why I should go to where I'm not needed. But so one questioning uh, your person and somebody wants to know why uh, somebody of your caliber with all what I've just presented will not be uh, invited to be part of uh, this move which we see is that is necessary to the end of the anglophone crisis well I think we should not make any mistake here mm. what the Prime Minister is doing is what we call in English a meet the people store I don't think that meet the people store you need to be meeting elites no, but, but, but he's not carrying but out any any. Uh, is is the same the same? He's going in the same uh, spirit as he did when he went to Bamenda in the northwest region. In Bamenda, the prime minister uh, on his Twitter handle talk about the dialogue which is ongoing. <laughs> the prime minister is on the meet the people's store. He is not on any dialogue mission. You can see him going down to the streets and talking to the population. That is not any dialogue it's just okay, meet the meeting the people Barry, are you uh, do you mean that the prime minister will f from the southwest region probably be going to another uh, region east of the mongo i have no idea of his agenda but i know that he is on the meet the people store to convey the message that has been given to him by his boss notably uh, that his boss is now ready to discuss to dialogue with the people on all issues except cessation. Missing people like you. Uh, and I want to say that when yeah. I listen to the to the message, mm. I just I just laugh because uh, the people who are fighting in the bushes are pro independence fighters. Uh -huh. There is no federalist in the bush. So if the head of state is ready to dialogue with uh, dialogue with people on all issues except cessation, it means that he is actually not ready to dialogue because. The real people who are fighting are the secessionists. They are not the federalists. Oh, uh, okay. Then when the, 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 the dialogue per se, when it will be open, we will see if uh, some other persons will be brought uh, to the table or not. But uh, this move of the government already is sending the PM to the conflict region. Is that not a move worth saluting? Well, I want to remind you that it is the government that started the whole thing. They okay. are the ones who declared war. And... Uh, Going by other examples in the country, uh, it is the Prime Minister is coming now after three years. Mm. Three years. 
the former prime minister was coming and entering regrettable town hall meetings. This one has gone down to the people, you see, after three years. He has gone to the district hospital to see the extent of the damage mm. caused by the people we know. Yes. Now, you see, why have they, has it taken them so long to send a top official to go down and actually find the facts for himself? People have been clamoring for a long time that the head of state should come down. It's unfortunate that this prime minister is coming at a time when there is a crisis because being an illustrious son of the soil and a prominent elite, mm. had he come to this uh, region when there was no conflict, the welcome would have been fantastic. Different from what we're seeing there. Fantastic. Because, you see, the people are welcoming their son, but uh, with mixed feelings because the message he's carrying is not doesn't really ring a bell but if you are to be in a southwest uh, any town or city in the southwest would you have come out to welcome the prime minister i would not have come out because as he is as a prime minister is there atrocities are still being committed while yeah. he was in bamenda six people were shot shot dead in muyuka mm. and even today uh, today we heard we heard that two military men lost their lives in, in my 17 so I don't think it's very, very safe for any person to be out there. Okay, um, Barrister, that's in other words, uh, saying that uh, the strategy is not worth enough uh, to end the anglophone crisis. No, 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 no. This is just uh, some outing to water down the tension. But you cannot think of this simple outing as something that would uh, end. And which crisis? People say he um, he is uh, he has changed the system. Uh, he unlike his predecessor, he's gone down to the people. Secondly, we saw some individuals presented as ex separatist fighters saluting the prime minister in Kumba. Well, for changing the system, we all know that the person who pulls the strings is his master who sent him. It's not him. Mm. So, Mr. Prime, uh, prime Minister Yang did his best to convey messages that were sent to him. So he cannot, Mr. Uh, Dr. John Diongute has not changed any system. The only thing he has done is that he has courageously gone down to the streets to be the people. And the government now openly says, even through the prime minister, head of governments, that they are ready to dialogue. That is Far an advancement. Than, yeah, ready to dialogue. Far more. Also, what I mean, saying that to you is not enough. What do you expect the government to do as of now? Even saying so and seeing the prime minister in the field to you is not enough. What should the government no, do? No, as no, no. I didn't say it's not. I said the message he is bearing is not enough because he says the president is ready to dialogue on all issues except secession. And I see that the real problem on the table is the problem of secession because the people in the bushes are secessionists they are pro-independent fighters so if you don't want to disc the dialogue with the people who are causing the trouble then who are you dialoguing the, with the message was it that the president doesn't want to dialogue with secessionists they want to debate everything except secession you are saying the same thing meaning, meaning uh secessionists can they come really to the table but no. they shouldn't be thinking about secession no, no, no. at the back if, of their mind if if they, if you say that they can come to the table then they are no longer secessionists since he says he's not dialoguing on secession the real problem is the restoration of the state of southern Cameroons, mm, which the government which, is not ready to take that's what they say the important thing for me is that he has accepted that he is ready to talk at first he forbade the use of even the, the pronunciation of even federalism now he is ready to talk i say that is an advancement and since he is advancing already yeah. he will continue advancing and he will discuss with those but the people are worried at the time when government is at one extreme uh, that is uh, they don't want to uh, talk about a secession secessionists say they want nothing short of the independence of the former uh, British southern Cameroon the local people continue to suffer and the international community is mounting pressure on both the separatists and the government of course uh, it's normal in the context that the international community comes in to serve, to, to serve as an arbiter. And that is why I said on other occasions that we are certainly going in for some negotiations and we shall need people who are going to enable the, 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 the negotiations. We should not think of taking any Cameroonian because we know ourselves, we all know ourselves. Uh, if we take any Cameroonian and put there to say, okay, you are going to be a mediator, uh. the person will certainly be visited at, <laughs> at night. <laughs> and in the morning, he will change his colors. We, well, should, we should go in for a high profile mediator of the caliber of Bill, President Bill Clinton. This is not a simple issue. We should take somebody who has, who is, who is charismatic yeah. and who is 
uh, whose uh, integrity cannot be put to question. If they choose you to mediate, it's a good thing proposing somebody don't like Omar Please, please don't choose me. <laughs> don't choose me. I, I, I say so. I say so because uh, uh, people like me, John Frundi, they've indicated that they want to uh, maybe be part of it. And we equally, some uh, political parties are uh, like uh, the Cameroonian movement. They talk about the fact that Cameroonian problems can only be solved by Cameroonians. Barista is even very complicated at this point where uh, secessionists equally they don't want to move from that position and the government don't to, doesn't want to move. What should be done, Barista? I think that we should go in for an independent and objective mediation. We should forget taking any Cameroonian because that would be self-serving. You have called, you've mentioned Nijon Frundi. He is from Northwest. We are talking about the Anglophones wanting to leave. It concerns him. So how do you want to how how do you want to uh, call monkey to sit on the trial of Babu? <laughs> is that <laughs> possible? Is that why we qualify the uh, the personality who is no uh, a Cameroonian ca coming to sit as a mediator? It would be like asking a monkey to preside over Babu's trial. Of uh, barista, we want to uh, get objectively what should be done now because we are ending. What I say we should go in for an independent and objective mediation we take somebody of high profile some international personality of high profile who can conduct this mediation perfectly thanks uh, barista ashu uh emmanuel president of reform a party for joining us on talking points ladies and gentlemen it is on that note that we'll put an end to the second part and equally this edition of the news thanks for watching have a nice.